Hello, Carlos. Hello, Michael. Why do, why do we learn more about these teachings by talking about them? Why it's, what is the reason that we learn more about these teachings uh, talking about them? Obviously, the, 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 the first uh, is the Nididhyasana, no? Practice, no? But uh, after, after that, no? Mm -hmm. uh, are you agree that uh, speak about the teachings is better or more profound no? that uh, write or other different uh, form of communications? What is the difference between reading, speaking, or writing for the purpose of better understanding and why? Reading or hearing? We can read and hear something without deeply understanding it. When we read or hear something, if it's something new, something we're not familiar with, in order to understand it, we need to think deeply about it. So reading or hearing about something is what is called sravana. Uh, thinking deeply about it and trying to understand it is what is called manana. And applying it in practice is what is called nidityasana. Um, speaking and writing are useful because they, they help to stimulate manana, uh, uh, thinking deeply about it. When, when, um, when we discuss with other people and try to express our understanding, in, if our understanding is imperfect, the, the imperfection in our understanding will be highlighted when we try and express it. And other people may say, no, no, it's not like that, it's like this. So in this way, by, by having dialogues about this, by discussing this with um, fellow aspirants, we, that can help us to do, uh, to help our manana go deeper. And it, but even more than um, speaking about it, writing about it is very effective because when we're talking, if, if, if for example, if, you, if you, we're having a conversation, after, the, after this conversation, if someone makes a transcript of what we've written, of what we've spoken, what we say is not so precise. And if we read the transcript, we may think, oh no, I wouldn't, I shouldn't have said it like this, I should have said it like this. We we can when we are writing something, we can refine our ideas. Because in writing we have to be more precise. In 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 speaking, people expect us not to be so precise and we expect some errors. And sometimes we we think one thing and we say another thing. We're talking about the snake rope analogy and we mix up snake and rope. Or we're talking about waking, dream and sleep, and we mix up the words. Some, it happens to all of us when, when talking. But when writing, we have to be more careful. We have to be, get the right words in the right place because people are going to read it and, and they're going to be more critical of it. So writing re requires um, deeper, uh, that is more uh, attention to detail. So writing tends to stimulate manana even more than uh, speaking about it. Mm. But it, the, the writing, uh, speaking and writing are helpful only to a certain extent. But manana shouldn't be dependent on speaking and writing because we can obviously, within our own mind, we can go deeper in that manana because ultimately, the, what we are, the subject we are trying to understand is beyond the reach of words and beyond the reach of thoughts. So the, the, the thinking process can go deeper than the words. Often we often we we are able to understand something, but not able to express it in words. It's a very uh, some very subtle things. Um, so the manana shouldn't be dependent on. Um, on uh, uh, talking about it or writing about it, but it can be greatly um, assisted by talking and writing about it. So, in other words, manana shouldn't be limited 
by our talking and writing, but we can, we can use talking and writing as an aid to our manana. Are complementary, no? Really. They're, they're because, complementary, yes, yes. For example, when I speak about the, the teachings of Bhagavan, I, I discover no, that the um, uh, immediately of the conversation, no, you can't uh, stop to to think profoundly to yes. detect the word or the sentence or no, um, give you the opportunity to uh, ordinate the mind, ordinate the thoughts, no, yes. alignment these thoughts with the sat vasana with your yes. really nature, no, and but how you expressed before when you are going to write. Uh, you have an opportunity to refine your understanding yes. very more than when yes, you were yes. speaking, no? Yes, yes. Is your experience too? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. And another benefit of of having discussions, whether discussions in writing or in or by speech, different that each one of us views things from a slightly different perspective. So when when people ask us questions or express a viewpoint, we then have to reflect and we have to understand where we have to understand that other person's point of view. And when we're trying to understand the other person's point of view, where they're coming from, it helps us to think about Bhagavan's teachings from different angles, from different perspectives. So mm -hmm. that's another way in which um, having dialogues whether in, in in spoken dialogues or written dialogues is helpful mm -hmm. that is in, in in my case people are often asking me questions mm -hmm. so those questions prompt me how to how to how to express it that a question any question is asked from a particular point of view so when someone asks a question we first have to understand the view of the questioner in order to be able to answer their question, if we view it only from our point of view, we may not give an appropriate answer. We have to try to understand why is this person asking this question? Why are they not able to understand it? Yes. So we have to think of it. We have to think of Bhagavan's teachings from different perspectives. And that also helps to us to refine our understanding. This requires a very very profound listening because yes, it yes. is necessary to yes. understand what is the yes. real purpose of yes, the question. Yes. No? But well, the first profound listening, we first have to profoundly listen to Bhagavan's teachings. Listen means not necessarily by our ears. If we read, we have to read it very attentively and, and try and understand. Because particularly, if we can see this particularly with Bhagavan's own writings, whether in prose like Nana, or in poetry like Oludhuna, Pupadesh, Undia, Aranatya, Stuti, Panchakam. The implication of what Bhagavan says is often much more than the actual words. And the words have a certain meaning, mm -hmm. but they also have very broad and deep implication. So when we read Bhagavan, we are not just to understand the, the words, not to understand just what he's explicitly saying what he is implying thereby. In, there are two terms used in Sanskrit, vachyata and lakshyata. Vachyata is the meaning of the words. Lakshyata is the intended meaning. So Bhagavan often expresses things in very simple words. But he's, what he's expressing in those simple words is something very deep. So we have to understand not only the words, but what is it that Bhagavan intends to convey by these words? What is he implying by these words? What, so, we, what he so really this, wants to tell us. Yeah. No? So we, 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 that is the sravana. First, the sravana has to be deep, not just merely superficially hearing or superficially reading. We, we, we have to, we have to be very, uh, uh, we have to attend very closely to what Bhagavan has said. And then we have to think about it very deeply. Then it's only by the manana that we understand not only the words, but what is implied by those words. Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, both deep sravana and deep manana both require clarity. And where do we get that clarity from? 
from the Nidityasana, from, from trying to turn our attention within to see what is it that Bhagavan is pointing at. The more we turn our attention within, the more, because the, the light that illumines the mind yes. is, is that pure awareness I am. And the mind is the light that illumines the, the world. Even the physical light is illumined only by the mind light, which is illumined by that original light. We so begin when, to change, you know, the, the, to see with the red light. light. And yes, begin yes, to see yes. with the, the, the real light. No? Yes, you, yes. So this, when, when we're looking within, we're looking at that original light. So the mind, we, 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 are, we are plunging into clarity, so to speak. We, we, are, we are drawing on, that, on, on the source of all clarity. So the deeper we go in this practice, the more clarity we will have. And the more clarity we have, the more meaning and deeper implication we will be able to see in Bhagavan's words. In another way, Michael, uh, for example, no, uh, mm. the experience that uh, we pass no, with the blog, no, with the yeah. trolls and all of that, no, yeah. uh, maybe in this uh, in this field no, of the yeah. writing communication, yeah. there are. Um, a very, very bigger opportunity to drop off this ego, no? Because in this communication, is it's more difficult that uh, the ego wants to appear because it's a, a open communication. Yeah. Our face uh, are here. We uh, the yeah. people never afterwards see this video, watch this video, yeah. all of that. But in the in the field of the writing, when the people are writing from his house in his in his computer, um, hiding of the rest of the world, can yes. see what you no, know, I know that there is a, a, a problem that uh, difficult uh, that the, the very principal purpose you no know, of these teachings that is a yeah, clarified, yeah. No? Yeah. Uh, but in in the other way, you no, know, mm. we have a very very big opportunity, you no. Know? Yes. To position in the in the in the in the line of of the Swarupa, of what we really are, and and, and correct no our position. Yes. Uh, too many yes. times yes. in the in the replies uh, in, in what you write, you know. Yes. What what do you think about it? And and are you um, in the disposition to open the blog in the future to uh, commentaries again with other? I don't think I'll do so because, um, firstly, it would take up, it takes up time. Because if, I, if the comments are open, then I have to read them in order to see which ones are to be, um, are to be, uh, which ones need answers and everything. And I really don't have time for it nowadays. Also, the, the, as you say, the problem is, um, in, in, um, in online communication, uh, particularly written communication, like in comments on blogs or things, people can hide behind anonymity. And people, people say and do things online that they would never do in open society. So um, human nature being what it is, it's almost inevitable if one has, a, if one has an open forum but trolls will come there. So it's, it's really, um, it, I, I get sufficient communication. I get, I get emails. I get WhatsApp messages. I get, um, WhatsApp messages, WhatsApp and signal, both of them. Some of them are written messages. Some of them are spoken messages. I usually reply to those messages speaking because it's easier speaking than writing. I just don't have time to, give written replies to everything that I'm asked. But it's relatively easy. And even when I go for a walk, I can be replying to um, with voice messages. So the, the communication is still going on, but it's not in an open forum where, uh, where it invites for trolls. So yes. all those years that I have for comments, it was good at that. It was what was meant to be at that time. But finally, it reached a point where it was it was it was clear it it was doing more harm than good, and so it 
it's as if Bhagavan said, okay, enough is enough, shut it down. And once it's shut down, I, I have no in inclination now to reopen it. Okay. Uh, Carlos uh, writes uh, something in the chat. He say, the thing is that uh, by having dialogues, we can believe our own misunderstandings if they are on our minds. At least until someone corrects our misunderstanding or we ourselves improve our understanding by practice. Yes. I mean, if we have our wrong understanding, yes, we can believe that we are right yes. in our wrong misunderstanding until someone like you or Nestor or someone else tells us, oh no, your yeah. understanding is it, it yeah. is like this, or see this. This is what Bhagavan tries to. Yes, yes. Uh, now, now I understand. Yes, Di dialogues help to help to expose our expose to us our own misunderstandings. Yeah. I, I, is that what you meant? <laughs> to to finish with our preconceptions, no, yeah. Carlos. Yes. Yeah, exactly that. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's if we have, uh, uh, we are all uh, tadakas or aspirants, and, and we have our maybe distorted understanding. The yes. only, the only way is like yes, keep improving, keep keep doing the manana, ravana, and yes, and that's it. Yeah, yes. It's constantly the understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Di dialogues can help us to recognize our own misunderstandings. But the problem is, if we're talking with people who share our misunderstanding, it doesn't, uh, it can be counterproductive. So um, it's um, like all things in this world, <laughs> there, are, there are potential advantages and there are also potential disadvantages. Hmm. Oh boy, I think they've got it. They, there's a term they use nowadays, echo chambers, where people who all share the same views, they, they, they are communicating on some social media or something, and each one is reinforcing uh, the views of the other because they all share those views. This happens particularly in politics and things like that. People, people tend to communicate with people who share their political views or their religious views or whatever, and they get confirmation from others. So they think, oh, yes, definitely I'm right. They could be completely wrong, but uh, they, they, they get, uh, they, in, in an echo chamber, their, their own misunderstandings are, um, are amplified and uh, reinforced and uh, re they're reassured, oh, yes, I'm right. So the same can happen with 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 these with a subtle subject like this. If if all people have a don't have a deeper understanding, but if the, the thing is, so we have to take responsibility. We can't just depend on others. We have to do our own. Uh, we have to read Bhagavan's teachings deeply and carefully. We have to think about them deeply and carefully, and we have to practice them deeply and carefully. Ultimately, we are responsible. Dialogues can be helpful, but they can also sometimes, if it's, if it's with the wrong people, it can be detrimental. So we, 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 shouldn't, we shouldn't depend upon others. It can be useful if we are having dialogues with the right people, people who maybe understand more deeply than us, it can be useful, but otherwise, if if we are if we are having uh, dialogues with people who share our misunderstandings, it can just reinforce our misunderstandings. For this reason, uh, have the treasure of Salwam and Murubanar yes. uh, transmission is yes. a yes. is a, a treasure in in, in Balwebe, no? absolutely yes. Balwebe, no? in, okay. in, Meanwhile, we are very attentive to uh, contrast all the yes. time yes. What, yes. whatever we, we think what yes. uh, the, the real transmission of yes. the Bhagavan's teachings because there are too many mistakes and yes. too many misunderstandings yes. this, this is another thing many of the people who recorded Bhagavan's teachings or who have translated Bhagavan's teachings didn't have a very deep understanding so their 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 
their lack of understanding or their misunderstanding are expressed when they record. That is, supposing I'm sitting and I'm listening to Bhagavan talking, if I don't understand him fully, if I misunderstand some of the things he says, and later I record it, I won't be recording what he actually said, I'll be recording what I understood of what he actually said. And if my understanding is not a correct understanding, I'll be recording. I, I may be convinced. I may, yes, this is definitely what Bhagavan said. I, I myself heard him say this. But actually what we've recorded is not what Bhagavan said, because it's almost impossible. After this conversation, if you go away and try and write down all that we said, how much can you write down? That now we happen to be recording it. But if, if supposing we were not recording it, if you tried to write down all that was said, you would, you would barely pick up 5% of it. And even that 5%, there may be inaccuracies. So this is, this is how many of these books, talks, and day by day of these books came to be, uh, came to be recorded. So, um, the, because the, the people who, who recorded, or people who've translated have not had a deep, have not had a sufficiently deep understanding. They've recorded what they have understood, and other people rely on their understanding. And what we need to, what we want to want to remember. No. Yes, yes, yes. But we, so we are fortunate. But Bhagavan himself has written his teachings. I mean, Bhagavan must have. Oh, we can't say even Bhagavan, but Bhagavan didn't do anything deliberately. It all happened. But that divine power that appeared in the form of Bhagavan knew that when things are recorded by people who have imperfect understanding, the recording is going to be un imperfect. Fortunately for us, Bhagavan himself wrote. He wrote Nana and he wrote so many uh Panchakam, Arunachastuti Panchakam, all these. So in if we if we we can rely on what Bhagavan himself has written. And through Murugana, he also recorded Guru Vachakukavai. So the second level of um of uh, reliability is Guru Vachakukavai. So if we I mean, truly speaking, I would say Guru Vachukukavai is a very great treasure. We are very blessed to have Guru Vachukukavai. But even if we didn't have Guru Vachukukavai, Bhagavan's own original writings are sufficient. Because though they're very brief, actually Bhagavan has given us the, the core principles of his teaching. So if we understand those core principles, we will be able to build a complete understanding. But Guru Vachakukavai is a very great help. If we've, if we've un read and understood Bhagavan's core teachings and Guru Vachakukavai, then if we read books like talks and so on, we will be able to, to judge how accurate it is, where it is, co where it is, uh, correctly, uh, conveying what Bhagavan meant and where it's less, I mean, many places in talks, if you read, You'll find many places it's not at all clear what is being said. It's not co coherent. It, it, but um, we can get some inklings here. Oh, Bhagavan may have said like this, or this is probably what Bhagavan meant. But it's not clearly expressed. And the and the uh, the writers that is in the in the ashram, no? Yes. Uh, I I I know. Uh, you correct me if I'm not okay. Uh, usually, Chinna Swami uh, tell us stop to write, listen. To Bhagavan, and after he uh, finally uh, finished to 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 speak, uh, write what you remember that he said. Chinnaswami didn't even say that. He passed a blanket order: nobody should write anything in Bhagavan's hall. That was his order, because um, when this may have been even before Paul Brunton, but one person that is Paul Brunton had come, and he was a journalist. He, he, um, came and he recorded things and everything. And he went away and he wrote a book and he published it. Chinnaswami, uh, was, uh, not very happy about this because he felt Paul Brunton is making a lot of money out of selling these books. He should give some money to Ashram because it, it's because of Bhagavan that his books are selling. And actually there was a, <laughs> there was a, a quarrel between them when, uh, when the next time that, um, 
the Paul Brunton came. He, he and Chinnaswamy had a fallout because he was, Chinnaswamy was demanding that he give some share of the royalties or something like that. So it may have been in that context, or it may have been even before that. Chinnaswamy anyway had passed an order. Nobody should write anything in Bhagavan's Hall. Um, the only person who wasn't affected by this was, or, or more or less the only person who wasn't affected by this was Murugana, because Murugana was sitting with Bhagavan and discussing things and writing in verses, but he was showing his verses. So Murugana was able to write things in Bhagavan's hall. Also, probably when she, when Lakshman Sharma was, when Bhagavan was explaining to him Uludunaktu and he was trying to write it in verses, he could probably also write. But norm, the normal conversations that are going on, day to day conversation, Chinnaswamy had passed this order, nobody should write in, in, in the old hall. So people like Mun Munagla Venkta Ramaya, who recorded talks, and Devaraja Mudliya and Suri Nagama, they had no choice but to sit there, listen, and then they would go away and write whatever they remember. After, afterwards, you afterwards, would listen. Yeah, no? yeah, yes. And, and for this, the confusion, yes, no? In yes. some, some parts, no? Yes. 